Today we're taking a look at the 10-bit video modes in the Canon R50, which was just released, and the Canon R7. So this is literally Canon's highest-end crop-censored hybrid camera versus Canon's lowest-end hybrid crop camera. And the R50 has really amazed me. Now the lenses we used for today's test were all RF lenses. I used the Canon RF 16mm, 50mm, 35mm, which I think those are going to be the three most popular prime lenses right now as there really aren't that many lenses available in the RFS system and they're all lenses that work on full frame. And then I did test one Super 35 lens that is in the RF mount, the Surrey 35 millimeter anamorphic lens. It's a little above and beyond. It is only for Super 35 APS-C sensors. It's fully manual focus, so it is a little bit different, but I wanted to see how that looks because I love using that lens on my red Komodo, and so it's interesting to see how it works on this little R50. In order to film 10-bit video in the R50, you need to shoot in the HDR PQ mode, and as you'll see from some of this footage, it actually comes out really great once you grade the image. Now, instead of using HDRPQ in the Canon R7, even though it has that mode, I ended up shooting it all in C-Log3. For the number one reason being, that's how you're gonna get the best image quality out of the R7. But interestingly enough, in the Canon R7 and the R6 when I had it, I just didn't like the HDRPQ mode and it didn't seem to be as good quality, weirdly enough, as you get out of the R50's HDRPQ mode. Don't know if maybe they'll change that in a firmware update down the line or just isn't optimized for HDRPQ, but I figured I'd let you know so we aren't doing HDRPQ versus HDRPQ. We're doing the best 10-bit you'll get out of the Canon R50 versus the best 10-bit we'll get out of the R7, which I'm actually using to film this right now. So let's take a look at the footage. So as you see from the footage, the footage definitely looks similar in both cameras. However, it doesn't look exactly the same, which makes sense because it's not the same exact sensor in both cameras. We're also shooting in HDRPQ on the R50, where we're shooting in C-Log3 on the R7, which I'm assuming we're gonna get more dynamic range because it is Canon Log3 versus an HDRPQ. I am really surprised how great the 10-bit footage in the HDRPQ mode looks in the R50. So it really comes down to, if you were only shooting up to 4K 30 and need 10 bit, you don't need 4K 60 and you're on a budget, you could totally get away with this R50 compared to using something like the R7. I'm really surprised how great the footage looked. This coming up week, Nina, who actually helped me with this video, so thank you, Nina, she's gonna come out and we're gonna test using the Canon R50 with some more anamorphic lenses on the gimbal to really push this thing to its limits. So I can't wait to put that little short out. It'll be available later this week. If you have any questions about the Canon R50, R7, any tests you wanna see me do, make sure to ask in the comments below. And if you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make Make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos from the channel. Until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you for watching as always, everybody, and I will see you in the next video.